You're going right. mobile, James. I am. It's the only way I can do this. <laughs> uh, let me just stop that for a second and then uh, <clears throat> we'll see how the uh, how the Wi-Fi stretches out into the garden. I didn't think you were usually outside, is that, or is that just a summer thing? Yeah, no, no, always on the patio. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm a fair weather brewer, albeit it's a, the weather's been a bit too fair recently. Um, so you kind of, uh, <clears throat> the depths of winter, I tend to take a bit of a break for a month or two and, um, uh, and then when it's really warm in summer as well. Ah, it's raining. That's not good. <laughs> no. My, my brewery's getting wet. Oh, no. <laughs> it hasn't rained for weeks. <sighs> Seriously, look at this. It's like everything's dead in the garden. <clears throat> oh dear. Ouch. You don't have a gazebo that you set up like Charles then? No, no, I've looked at doing that, but that's a bit of a. Uh, when when it, if it's really bad and I really need to brew, then I'll take it into the kitchen and do it there. But it's yeah. a bit cramped in there. And uh, uh, when eventually, or if we build an extension, then I'll try and get space inside. Then yeah. So, um, okay. Is that a fridge underneath your? Uh... Yep. Oh, neat. Yeah. All right. Well. <clears throat> Give it a minute and I'll, I'll explain. Oh, all. Yeah, uh, sorry, I don't want to jump again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you first up, James? Yeah, I thought I'd try and get in before the rain came down, but it beat me to the punch. Okay, I can see a few people on. So we'll get going because I'm getting wet out here now. Um, yeah, so this is, oh, there you go, sorry, everybody can see and hear me? Yeah. Cool. So this is my brewery. Um, it's built into kind of what was a kind of log storage outdoor shed kind of thing. Um, and then I built this, uh, the frame to sort of stand everything on inside it. Um, as you can see, I've got a three vessel system, um, so on the, the, left is the hot liquor tank in the middle is the kettle and then on the right is the mash tun um and uh, there's a couple of uh pits back there as well to fire the whole thing um i can run them all at the same time and yeah down here i've got my fermentation fridge um not fermenting anything right at the moment but um yeah and then uh, it's a nice shiny stainless steel kit all around uh, i've got uh, i've got a mill as well uh, so I try and mill all my grain from fresh. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of all of it, really. Um, I tend to use, I've got a, a fairly sizable immersion chiller. Um, and then here I've got, um, this thing here is a, a, a valentine arm. Um, so basically what that's for is, is when you're sparging, um, you see what it is, basically. Um, it comes off the, the bottom of the mash tun, off the tap. And then what it provides is, is a vent at the top to stop any suction. And the idea is that the, um, where the, the work flows out in this T piece here, um, it's never gonna drop below that level in the mash tun. Um, so it means you can basically put water into the sparge and it will drop down to the level that, that sort of uh, is the same height as this piece here. And the idea is then you can move it up and down as you need to, to, to sort of, gradually empty the mash tun um, and it avoids any stuck sparges and it, so it kind of makes sparging very easy. Um, I don't have a pump or anything to, to fill, uh, to gradually trickle water into the, the mash tun. Um, or I did, did do that once um, and I have got a, a pump and a um, sort of a, a, just a needle valve 
um, getting a bit rusty, unfortunately, um, that allows you to trickle in water at a very slow rate. Um, but that's, uh, um, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, um, normally in the past, I sort of batch barged. Um, I still do do that quite regularly if I'm not too bothered about the gravity. But when you're brewing a triple IPA or something bigger like that, then uh, I tend to, to want to sparge properly. Um, so yeah, that's how you end up with, um, and that's when I use the, the Valentine arm on there. So, yeah. What size are the vessels, James? Uh, the kettle and the, the um, hot liquor tank are both 35 litres. And actually, I think the mash tun is as well. Um, they're probably in the end, I should have gone a bit bigger, but I guess you always say that. Um, they're, they're big enough to, to make a, essentially at the end of it, a corny full of, of mm. beer. I don't need more than that. Um, however nice it would be. Um, I occasionally wish I had a slightly larger mash tun for the bigger um, bigger grain amounts and things like that. But given I've made the uh, sort of 1100 strength beers um, using this, it, it's, I guess, big enough probably. Um, yeah, so that's it. Anybody got any other questions about it? And so how do you get your water from your uh, hot liquor tank to the mash tun if you're not using a pump? I've got this um, high tech thing in here <laughs> uh, called a jug. Uh, um, yeah, I generally I, I don't pump because it, it's, it's there's a lot of, um, there's a bit of faff to set it up. And honestly, I just find it a bit easier to just, mm. um, yeah, just to, to jug it across most of the time. And particularly for the mash tun, because the, the Valentine arm stops the level dropping too low, it means you can sort of pour some in and then walk away from it for a bit without any worry it's going to run the, the, um, the mash dry. Um, yeah, and the only other thing I guess I do is I put my mash water actually in the kettle normally um, and then the, the sparge water in the hot liquor tank. So I can then put all the water from that straight into the mash tun, um, mix it all, dough it all in and everything, and then I'll sparge from, from the hot liquor tank separately. And that means I can treat the water separately if I need to, um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and why two um, outlets on the hot liquor tank? Um, so I did, I have tried various things with recirculation and things like that. So the one thing that is not great is um, you get the stratification in, in temperature. So if I set the PIDs up to hit a certain temperature, um, I, you can see like here, I've actually got the, the probes quite low. Mm. Um, I've had them up here in the past, but then the problem is, is when the water level drops a bit lower, it, it doesn't work then. Um, so it's something I'll reconfigure again at some point, but um, I basically at some point I switched the probes from being here to down there and then thought, well, I'll put an extra tap on there so I can try sort of uh, whirlpooling or recirculating to, to even up the temperatures or something like that. I don't really use it if I'm honest. Um, just stirring is easier. Um, yeah. I think Tim's got a question. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll just send loads over. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Look pretty hand up. Please. Sorry, I'm on, on my phone. I can't see if anyone's putting their hand up, unfortunately. So, uh, no. or at least I'm not, not looking for it. So, cool. Could you just um, go back so we could see the thing in context? If you saw what I mean, does that make sense? Uh, if you take a couple of steps back, so. Oh, see the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, I see. So you can see like the, the doors on either side um, fold in. Um, yeah. And then the, that lid drops down. The mash tun I've actually put underneath it when I'm done oh, brewing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've just moved it out for today, but the lid won't go down if I if I have that really? out. So that will go yeah. back underneath. Um, and then, yeah, it all, pack, all, all sort of goes into a, a little unit that um, is weatherproof and the one joy of it is is kind of I can throw as much wort or water or anything else around out here and doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can be as messy as I want and um, yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, quite nice that way. Mm. Where's the fermentation stuff, James? Is that the fridge? The fridge down here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, I've just got um, got a little controller up here uh, for the temperature, and then inside there is just a, a heater cable at the bottom. Uh, there's a little fan hidden at the back here, um, you can see, and then yeah, just a, a steel sort of fermentation tank um, nice. that I quite like, um, and that just has a, a blow off at the top as well, uh, so I can put a bit of tubing in there and uh, yeah. Keeps them okay, so clean. Ferment. What about dispense? Uh, okay, I'll show you the other part of the brewery then, which is uh, just give me a moment. I'm not sure how good the Wi Fi is up there, so um, give me a moment and I will just get to that. Tense moment. Will James come back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where Don't worry. In the attic. <laughs> uh no it's on on upstairs on the first floor in a oh. spare bedroom so um all right let's just hope this wife well, doesn't somebody asking about his brewing kit again uh, here we go here's the um this is my kegerator um so you see i've got five taps um a little oh, sizable tank of co2 down there um and then individual uh secondary regulators up the top here the one for each keg um <clears throat> see inside nice big mess of uh, beer line and stuff like that in here yeah got four kegs going it can just about fit a fifth corny into this gap down here but it's a bit of a it's not great kind of banged on the um shank here but if you use one of the um smaller or smaller mini keg things like these um that actually fits just in that space down there right so you can have five taps on at once if you want, as long as you don't need five full kegs. <clears throat> um, you also get a nine, one of those yeah, small uh, the, uh, nine litres in there, James, as well. Hmm. <clears throat> well, the one, the one I just picked up is a 10 litre. Oh, OK. Um, but um, the, the, the dumpy nine litre cornies are still the same diameter. So the issue is kind of that um it, oh, I see. it so like there's a step here yeah, so you have okay. to kind of fit it there so either yeah so either the corny sits on on just on the step which isn't great but it also then bangs on the um shank here so i cocked that up when i put that there oh, but yeah. um turned out it's fine because a 10 liter um mini keg fits into that space or a five liter yeah. one so i can just transfer when i need five taps on i just transfer the end of a keg into that and then that sits in that gap down there but so I don't what, need what five kegs or most of the time. So, uh, yeah, what circumstances do you actually need five taps? <laughs> <laughs> when I've brewed a lot of beer in a short period of time. Right. Okay. When I'm very thirsty. <laughs> just checking. You don't need to justify I, I that, James. That on up until very recently, I had five Not on, but because I, I, I brewed a lot of beer in a short period of time. What have you got um, on at the minute, James? And also, if you're lagering something, you're aging something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry? What, what's in there? What have you got on at the minute? Uh, so number one is IPA. Uh, number two is a red IPA. Number three is an American light lager. Number four is not on. And number five is my kind of my doppelbock thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Nice. But yeah, if you're lagering something for a few weeks, carbonating something, you may be aging something else. Okay. It helps to have them all in, in there, but you might not necessarily run five taps at the same time, but I can. So might as well. Tasty. Yeah. And it, anybody that's interested in building a, a keyser or kegerator or anything at any point, I do recommend these secondary regs. They're not that expensive. Um, and you can buy the, the cheap plastic keg land ones, but they're a bit of a false economy um, because what you can't, what you don't get with them, you can see on these is these are actually sort of daisy chained together, um, but you can turn them off individually. To... Oh, he's gone. We've lost him. On and off. Just extra bits you buy in the keg land rig, the secondary rigs. Oh, Bye, back. James. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to go back. Yeah. <clears throat>